Alright, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to Purple Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 2-1 loss to Liverpool at home in the Premier League. Now, despite the negative scoreline, this was actually an incredibly impressive performance from the Blues in many respects. A lot of naivety as well, which we'll get into, but loads of positives to take from this performance. And I'm going to say it now before I get into the analysis. Chelsea were better than Liverpool in open play in this game. They kept their front free quiet. Klopp was making defensive substitutions before the end and we'll get into all of that but basically it's a really positive performance from Frank Lampard's Chelsea. Before we do get into the match analysis and review I do want to ask that you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'm uploading content every single day. I don't want you guys to miss any so please do subscribe and hit the bell notifications icon and why not like this video to help me out. Right now Chelsea versus Liverpool has always been a huge fixture but coming into this game as a you know a bit different narrative. Obviously both sides lost in midweek, but generally Liverpool are arguably the best team in England, Europe at the moment. You know, you bring Man City obviously into that conversation. And Chelsea are very much going through growing pains with Frank Lampard, even though it does look like they've got all the young talent in the world in their squad. So Chelsea were huge, huge underdogs. Liverpool have been imperious of late and this is their 15th win in a row or something. So Chelsea, a lot of Chelsea fans are just asking for a performance, trying to see a bit more identity from Frank Lampard's Chelsea. And you know what? They got that today and they probably should have got more out of the game. Anyway, I want to talk about the game and give you a bit of a linear timeline, a sort of journey into this match. So let's bring up the analysis screen. Right, next to me on the graphic I've used who scored's match centre stat display to give you some sort of idea of who lined up, the numbers, this, that and the other, which I'll talk about a bit more later in the game. But yeah, as you can see, the lineup next to me is the pretty generic Liverpool 4 3 3 we know how they're going to play, they're a known quantity, we know how they're going to line up. Robert Firmino has been brought back into the side, which obviously is huge, he's a huge threat. He makes everyone tick. And in terms of the Chelsea lineup, it was really promising to see what I speculated might happen. Frank Lampard reverted back to the 4-3-3 like he did in the Super Cup against Liverpool when they performed so well. Thankfully, N'Golo Kante was restored into the side to complete that midfield free of Jorginho, Kovacic and N'Golo Kante. But there were a couple of changes made. Tammy Abraham came into the side instead of Giroud like in the Super Cup and Tamori started at centre-back. So it was a promising lineup, but it's just still unknowing at this point. You're like, right, that's good. Let's not screw this up. So kick off, boom, and we're off. The opening few minutes of this game was kind of the whole game personified. High octane, you attack, we attack. A little bit of a basketball vibe, uh, and there was players running everywhere. So after the opening few minutes of a lot of up and down attacking football from both sides, Mane nearly gets a ball down from a Liverpool attack, and Azpilicueta in the fifth minute does a lovely bit of defending where he sticks out his boot and prevents Mane from getting in for what would be a massive chance to score. Willian, who would go on to have a really, really bright game at a really good moment in the 8th minute. Kante, who would go on to have an amazing game as well, plays for a lovely weighted ball onto Willian, but sadly he gets bodied off the ball by Virgil van Dijk. No shame in that, really. By the 10th minute, there's been loads of quick combinations and passes, mainly from Chelsea, but still from Liverpool. They're doing their thing even if they can't get their front three into the game so much. Massive shout out for Jorginho at this point. He's really doing almost like hyper register. He's releasing the ball very, very quickly. And Chelsea are generally playing out of the press very well. And speaking of playing out of the press, there's a lovely moment in the 11th minute I have to talk about where Kovacic does a super, super little bit of skill to play out of the press. He does a little flip flap, gets around three players and then plays out down the wing. It's an amazing little skill that he does. And we know they've he's got that in him, Kovacic. For the 13th minute, the first piece of this young academy Chelsea naivety is displayed and Christensen comes in a little bit too eager with a challenge on the edge of the box and concedes a free kick. 14th minute, goal Liverpool. Mo Salah rolls the ball forwards, taking the free kick, essentially just laying it off to Trent Alexander-Arnold who just rifles it in the back of the net. It's a great goal and it's a good set piece but it's so naive to concede that set piece in that situation there and it's early in the game and at this point you have no idea how the game's going to go but it's frustrating and again I always maintain that this is something that can be coached out of the side because in open play up to this point they've been very good. So in the 15th minute Emerson comes off touching his hamstring he had looked a bit wobbly in the opening stages and on comes Marcus Alonso. Gulp. Or so I thought. 
Chelsea respond really well actually from going a goal down in these stages. They go up the other end, they put a lot of pressure on Liverpool. Liverpool themselves still have a lot of energy in this part of the game and they're doing quite well to contain Chelsea's attacking threat but Chelsea's heads never drop, they've got really sharp attention and you can tell they're going all out, they're flat out for this game against this opposition for their coach Frank Lampard. So the following few minutes actually gets a little bit niggly in terms of fouls, this is a very physical game, Chelsea are conceding fouls, Liverpool are conceding fouls, the game's going up and down, Chelsea are sharp and on it like I've just said but I, I was sort of worried at this point that these little fouls and physicality moments might lead to lapses of concentration. 24th minute, Chelsea break down the other end and both Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount get behind the Liverpool defensive line. The flag stays down, Tammy Abraham gets his head up and takes a shot on goal which forces a save from Adrian. Probably not his best shot but agonisingly, frustratingly, Mount is there for a square ball and what would be a certain goal to make it 1-1. 27th minute, goal Chelsea, but is it? Chelsea do some lovely offensive play in the final third combinations, but it starts to get scrappy from a Liverpool point of view, and there's a little bit of pinball, to be honest, around the Liverpool players, and as Blaquita slots in the goal for it to be 1-1, and you know, you argue they definitely deserve this goal for the equaliser in terms of the run of play, but Mason Mount was offside just before VAR looked at it, disallowed the goal, super frustrating. You could maybe even say it could be 2-1 Chelsea at this point. 30th minute, goal Liverpool. Football's a cruel game, isn't it? As Pilaqueta, who's frustrated after having his goal rule offside, concedes a free kick on the right side of Chelsea's area. Again, another naive piece of Chelsea defensive play, conceding dangerous free kicks. It's the exact same move from Liverpool. One player rolls it forward, the other takes in the set piece, Bobby Firmino is in the area. Again, Poor defending from Chelsea, naive defending from Chelsea. He slots at home 2 0, which is a really unfair reflection on the match so far. These two set piece goals for Liverpool when Chelsea have actually been incredibly threatening uh, in this first half. 36th minute, Tammy goes down with a shoulder injury. I was sweating at this point. I thought he might have dislocated his shoulder or something really bad, but he does probably just feel a twinge or a nerve. He gets a knee in the back from Adrian, which to be honest should be like a reckless piece of play but you never see penalties given for those but fortunately he gets up he runs it off and everything's okay 42nd minute christensen sustained an injury a couple of minutes before uh, by colliding with tamori it's just an unlucky moment and zuma has to come on for christensen so really really worrying zuma hasn't been great of late and already in the first half frank lampard has been forced into two substitutions and 50 percent of his starting back four are no longer on the pitch. 45th minute, another Chelsea chance. As he puts yet another decent ball in. He's doing a lot of those recently. Tammy meets it with his head, but puts it just wide. And he did well to peel away from the centre back. See, so another frustrating move. 47th minute, in the dying seconds of the first half, Alonso puts in a lovely ball, who actually put in a lot of decent balls himself this half. It's a really good ball in. Adrian does claim it, but he spills it. Advancing Chelsea players on, but he just reclaims before Chelsea can essentially get with someone's toe on it. Half time, Chelsea nil, Liverpool two, and a really cruel reflection on Chelsea's performance in that first half. You can tell Chelsea played well generally defensively in open play because Liverpool's front three in Mane, Firmino and Salah hadn't really combined or done anything special. Chelsea were creating loads of chances on the break, yet again it was naive defending and they conceded two set piece goals which was infuriating but in terms of the general play it was exciting and entertaining and promising statistically it was pretty much down the middle in terms of 49 percent chelsea possession 51 liverpool i think they both had the same amount of passes chelsea actually had a better passing accuracy than liverpool at half time chelsea had 80 percent to liverpool's 75 percent but chelsea only had one shot on target and liverpool had two which obviously they converted both which were from set pieces. Right, second half, no changes at the break. Chelsea come out, Liverpool jump on them essentially. They come out really, really with a high octane press and attacking. They basically want to squash this game as quickly as possible. Kepra had to make a really good save in the 47th minute to prevent Chelsea going down to 3-0 and then ultimately I imagine their heads would have dropped. That was a huge moment and a great save from Kepa. I think it came on the back of a set piece and yes, indeed, Chelsea do look very concerning 
defending set pieces again. So it is about the opening five minutes plus where Liverpool do come out swinging and they're basically trying to expend loads of energy and squash the game. Chelsea come out alive of that five minutes without conceding a goal and they start to sort of get back into the game rather quickly. Indeed, it was really only those opening five minutes where Liverpool were more clearly dominant than Chelsea. Chelsea would go on to dominate this half and by this 50 second minute, they were putting in loads of loads of offensive passages of play all around Liverpool. At this point, no clear-cut massive chances, but they were really growing into the game. By the 57th minute, Liverpool are incredibly uncomfortable. They've already started doing loads of time-wasting, which referee Michael Oliver has been said, stop doing it, stop doing it, stop doing it, and the 57th minute, he books Trent Alexander-Arnold for time-wasting. They're getting sweaty at this point. 59th minute, Chelsea are really, really going for it now on attack. They win a corner, and Tammy nearly scores a goal, but puts it just wide and actually results in a corner and the resulting corner is a set piece from Chelsea that goes quite well the ball falls out kindly to N'Golo Kante for a long shot and for a long shot you want it to fall for someone else and he drags this shot just wide Chelsea don't score a goal. 64th minute, shout out to Tamori who shows why his pace is unmatched. He does a superb recovery run when Salah's got possession running down the wing. Stays with him, no problem, tackles, regains possession. Uh, superb run by Ficaro Tamori. 71st minute, oh my god. And Golo Kante scores a goal. And he scores a lovely goal. Yeah, whatever they're defending might have, should have been better, but he's the kind of player who they don't suspect. A lovely weaving run in the opposition penalty area and then just curves in a lovely low ball to the side of Adrian and scores what is a lovely finish, a lovely goal in Golo Kante. I know he scored goals before since the Sari revolution or whatever, but this was a superb goal. Chelsea 2-1, he picks up the ball straight away or whatever, he runs straight back to the center circle. He does not celebrate, he's like, now nah, we're having this boys, we're the better team in this half. Let's carry on. The goal was coming and Chelsea do deserve it in terms of the run of play. Chelsea immediately have their tails up after that goal and they continue their dominant attacking offensive play against Liverpool who do not look comfortable at all and not themselves at this point. 76th minute, Michi Batshuayi comes on for what looks like a tired Tammy Abraham and you wonder, could the narrative be written for the forgotten Batsman today? Spoiler, no. 81st minute, Marcus Alonso forces a save from Adrian, he was just offside but he's been really really good this half and indeed most the game Marcus Alonso so shouts out to him. Another reason why you know Chelsea have been the better side in this half is Klopp's been losing his head and making a lot of defensive substitutions. He wants to hold on to this game. He The, the squashing it plan was in the opening five minutes. He knew Chelsea were a threat all game even from that first half as well and basically he wants this game to end at this point. 88th minute an agonising moment when Michy Batshuayi received the ball and acres of space in the opposition penalty area between the centre backs. He tries to header it and heads it just wide you wonder if you could have done something else with it probably should have scored and done better but he was in the right place at the right time I guess but so frustrating 89th minute Liverpool are on the ropes and concede a corner Chelsea do not convert from said corner but they are all up in their grill 90th minute and you have to ask was that the moment Marcus Alonso puts in a superb ball which he'd been doing for like the most of the time he was on the pitch today Ball curls around lovely for Mason Mount to meet with his left foot and he just scoops it over and it would have been such a good goal and Chelsea absolutely would have deserved that equaliser to make it 2-2. In the final minute of stoppage time, Marcus Alonso stops a Liverpool break when they finally break out by conceding a yellow card. But ultimately, the full-time whistle blows. Chelsea 1, Liverpool 2. Liverpool can breathe a sigh of relief in this half because they have been run ragged and it, Van Dijk and Matip were not looking themselves towards the end of that half. There was tiredness all over the pitch in terms of players in red and Chelsea, if that game goes on for five, ten minutes longer, Chelsea easily gets some points out of this game. Right, let's talk about a few other elements of the game and the general vibe of Chelsea moving forwards and get rid of the analysis screen. Chelsea can be incredibly proud of this performance. It was very, very good and it reflected what Frank Lampard is trying to do in terms of style of play. Like I said, really, they were undone by naivety around the box and set pieces. Now, I've said this before before and I'll say it again even though if it seems frustrating. In theory this is stuff that should be able to be coached out of the players but in terms of 
creative talent, combinations and chemistry, it looks like it's all there for Chelsea and it looks like they can do it. And today kind of proved that with an excellent performance and Liverpool didn't have many answers for Chelsea's attack and again, open play. It's difficult to talk about player performances in this review because the whole team was man of the match because of the sort of drive, the desire and the team spirit, I guess, was so evident on the pitch today. But shout out to Willian, he was really good. He's often a boo boy. And another boo boy, Alonso, coming on for Emerson, which seemed boring at the time, but he was so, so effective in this game down that left-hand flank as a fullback and not a wingback. I probably wouldn't expect him to do that every week, but he was well rested, and I feel like that was really, really good for Marcus Alonso. As for Laqueta, apart from his frustrated moment where he conceded the set piece that led to the second goal, he was actually very, very good defensively, generally, and he put on a lot of good balls, which is really impressive. For Kaya Tomori as well, very good, probably the best defender on the day, very good recovery pace, very calm on the ball, and a good ball player, he's good at passing, so shout out to Vakayo. And obviously, the big baller himself, N'Golo Kante, defensively immaculate, incredibly creative in the sort of like middle third, and even the number 10 in the whole area, and obviously a wonderful goal, so superb performance from N'Golo Kante. So yeah, Chelsea probably deserve more, but you know what? It's not an embarrassing scoreline, and I think a lot of people, analysts, pundits, whatever broadcasters will all reflect on what was a really promising performance from Chelsea Football Club. Liverpool came out high octane and confident as they usually do, especially defensively, but Chelsea ground that out of them. Chelsea's youthful, energetic and attacking style of play had Liverpool on the ropes before the end and like I said, if that game went on for longer, I'd probably bet on Chelsea getting that equaliser. I don't think anyone will walk away from that game as a Chelsea player or a Chelsea fan being overly disappointed. Being frustrated, yes, I think at most, and looking at where Chelsea are weak in set pieces and thinking, right, this is something we really have to deal with, but everything else on the pitch looks pretty good, to be honest. And you know what? All the Chelsea Academy players, and more and more for Kai Tomori, looking incredibly good and generally positive. And it's nice to know Chelsea can still rely on the likes of Marcus Alonso and Willian still has a point to prove in this team. Anyway, what do you guys think of the game? Get down in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on this game, on Chelsea moving forward, on Frank Lampard's team, on all of it. Just let me know. Get down in the comments and express your opinions. Remember to like the video, guys, if you have enjoyed the content today. And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. Other than that, guys, I'm out. You enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love you, bitch.